stacks is linked lists. Um, using our link list implementation uh, to implement a stack is relatively straightforward, which is, which is great. Um, so let's say we have a stack object and it has a single instance variable first, just like our linked list has. Um, and first refers to a node and node is exactly the same. It has a reference to the elements, to the element, the data, um, and it has a reference to the next node. There's only a couple operations, two key operations we need to focus on when it comes to stacks, pushing and popping. Um, pushing, the node always goes at the front of the linked list. So we can do that simply by linking the new node to the previous first and then updating first to link to the new node. And popping is just removing the first node from the list, okay? So that's really straightforward. We just grab the first node, temporarily hold on to that reference, update first to refer to the first nodes next, and we're done. That's all a stack takes, okay? Um, it, works out, it works out really well. Um, to be clear, I'm not saying that we have to use a linked list to implement a stack. Um, in fact, using an array list might, is probably more efficient. Um, in the upcoming maze lab, you'll implement a stack using an array list. Um, but I wanna do a little bit of live coding today to focus stack as a linked list because it reinforces our linked list stuff. Um, and it's a little bit more involved than, than doing it with an array list. Um, so let's take a look at this together. All right, so in our chapter 16 class notes folder, I've opened up linked list stack um, as the class that we're going to be implementing today. Um, if we look through what's in here already, um, some stuff's already written. Here's our class linked list stack. Here's our instance variable, which references the top of the stack. It's called first, just like it was in our linked list class. Um, the constructor is already implemented to make an empty stack. We set first to null, just like we did in the linked list class. Um, we'll come back and implement these methods in a second, but we have our, our, inner, our static inner class node here. Again, just like we had in the linked list class um, that has two instance variables, data and next. So a lot of similarities here to the linked list. We're gonna focus on just implementing a couple of methods here based on like the diagram we just we just looked at. Um, so we're going to implement push and we're going to implement pat, um, push and pop and empty. And that's it. Um, you could certainly implement peak if you wanted to as well, but just, we're just going to focus on these, these more interesting ones. So let's do push first. So our method header, so that we match that of what's expected for stacks. Again, we're not going to worry about generics here. So we're gonna make it of type object. Here's our method push. It takes a single parameter, which is a reference to the element to add to the stack, to push on top of the stack. I'm gonna move these windows around a little bit to make this easier to switch back and forth. All right, so steps we need to do. We need to make a new node. We need to initialize data. We need to initialize next. We need to finally then update first in the stack object. All right, so let's do each of those steps in turn. First, let's make our new node, just like we did with the linked list class in several cases. Let's initialize all of the new nodes instance variables first. So new node.data equals element. That's the element we're pushing onto the stack. And new node.next, the next node is the node that is currently at the top of the stack. It's currently the first node. Okay. That maintains the integrity of our linked list. Once we've said that, now we can change the first node to refer to the new node. That's it, it's not too bad. That's all it takes to push a new element onto our stack using a linked list. Not bad at all.
let's do pop. Again, we're not doing generic, so we're just going to return a reference to type object. Um, here we need to do a little bit of error checking. What if the stack is empty? If we call pop on an empty stack, uh, we need to throw an exception. So we'll say if this dot empty, and we'll implement empty in a second. But we will throw our new no such element exception. Boy, I'm glad that that gets filled in automatically. All right. Assuming the stack isn't empty, let's go back here for a second. Assuming the stack isn't empty, uh, we need to update first. Well, we need to hold on, to grab the data out of the node on the top of the stack. Then we need to update first to refer to the second node. So we can go first is the first nodes next. So that's how we link that up. And that's where stuff I think starts to get a little bit confusing in terms of all the instance variables. So first let's grab the element before we lose track of it. The element is gonna equal this.first.data. So the first node's data, grab that because we're gonna need to return it. And then it's only a line of code, but I think it's a little tricky. The new first node is going to be the first node's next node. Oh, that sounds awful. But I think the picture helps a lot. And let me just return the element. I think this line of code right here is, is what kind of tri trips us up and is conceptually challenging. These diagrams are really helpful. Looking ahead to when you are implementing some of these classes in the context of the maze lab, sketch this stuff out, right? If you're writing, if you're do, using an array list to implement your stack, draw a little sketch um, so you keep track of what is what. Um, you're also going to be using a linked list to implement a queue. Um, again, draw a sketch to help you out with that as well. All right. Finally, we need to actually implement the empty method because we're using that. So public Boolean empty. And we'll simply check uh, if there's a node or not. So if first, if this dot first equals null, uh, if that's true, it returns true. If it's not null, it will return false. And that's all we need. So I implemented a stack demo class. So once you have this typed in, uncomment this code because now it should compile and go ahead and run it and make sure we get the output we expect. <laughs> 